Good day, Grade 12s. Welcome to this first Skype lesson. Welcome to Turnable. Um, as you can see, these lessons are brought to you by Turnable.org. If you would like to join in with the lesson and send me comments and ask me about certain questions, you have to register on the site and then you need to join the Grade 12 Mathematics class and then you can message me. I may not be able to see the messages if there are too many of them while I'm teaching you, but I will look through all the messages and I will make sure that I respond to all the comments. So what I've decided to do is go through the Eastern Cape June Common Paper. We have uploaded the Common Paper up to the June Revision Week of the Grade 12 Mathematics. Um, you'll notice when you go look for it that there is no memo. That is because I don't want you guys, if possible, to find the memo. I want you to try and do these questions by yourselves without looking at the memo. And then once you've done the whole question, question paper, you can either come and watch the lessons or you can go and download the memo paper. I will be uploading the memo onto the system as soon as I've gone through the whole exam paper. The reason being, there's a very good reason, grade 12s, that's called the OER method. So let's say, for example, you get to the first question and it says solve for x in each of the following cases. Okay, and you've got 2x squared minus 7x, which is a pretty easy question. It's a nice warm-up question for the start of the exam paper. But let's say you look at that question and you think to yourself, oh, I don't know what to do. What do you do? You go and glance at the memo and you see what they did and you go, oh yeah, and then you think you know how to do all the sums. But the problem is in tests and exams is there's no memo to glance at. Okay, you have to glance inside your brain to see what the answer is. So the best thing to do is always to do exam papers without memos, okay? Even if you just do sections first with each section, you don't look at the memo and then you go back and then look at the memo, okay? So we will not be providing the memo. You guys are welcome to Google for it. You can, it's not a problem. Okay, but I would really and truly suggest that you try and do these questions either with me slowly or ahead of me, because I will be going quite slowly through these to make sure you all understand. Or you can download the paper from the Turnable system, do the questions, and then come and watch the videos. Right. Oh, finally, the other thing, the other reason why you'd want to join the Turnable system is because at the end of this video, it goes and saves the video. So if you miss anything in the in the actual video you can go and watch the video again and you can see how we did things so let's get started straight away and i'm just going to basically work through this exam paper nice and slowly and then by the end of this exam paper i'm hoping that you guys will have we'll do a little survey with you guys on twitter or somewhere and i hope that you'll be able to identify sections that you are more worried about than other sections and we will go through those sections because Remember this time, right at this time, we're busy doing revision. Okay, so the first question says 2x squared minus 7x equals 0, and they're asking us to solve for x. Okay, now a typical error that students make, which is why they throw this question is in, is because students will go, well, 2x squared is equal to 7x. Let's cancel the x's, and you're left with 2x equals 7 and therefore x is equal to 7 over 2. That's correct, but you've actually missed out a whole answer. What you need to realize is that there is a common factor here of x and by cancelling you've actually lost one of the answers. So that is why they tend to put this type of question in one of the first couple of questions in almost every exam paper out there. So you need to realize that you need to take out a common factor of x. So you left with, you take out x and you left with 2x minus 7 is equal to 0. Now that means that either x equals 0 or 2x minus 7 equals 0. Therefore 2x is equal to 7, therefore x is equal to 7 over 2. So that was that answer that you got there, great, but you lost out on this one that x equals 0 and that is a viable option. So you need to be very careful when you get these questions that you don't just rush into them and cancel the x's. 
Right, the next one, we've got 1.1.2 says 4x plus 4 over x plus 11 equals 0. x does not equal 0, so it doesn't matter, and that is great. And they want us to give the answer correct to two decimal places. And as soon as you see that you're given the answer correct to two decimal places, what does that mean? That means that we are going to have to use the formula and the formula is on your formula sheet but I'm going to write it at the top here it's x is equal to minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a okay and that is the formula that's on your formula sheet so there's no excuse to get that formula incorrect Okay, so what does that mean? But this is called the quadratic formula, which means we need to get this into the form of a quadratic, which is ax squared plus bx plus c. So let's look at this. We've got 4x plus 4 over x plus 11 and equals 0. So we need to get it into this form. So the easiest way to do that is to multiply everything by x to get rid of this denominator. So if we do that, we end up with 4x squared plus 4, because the x is cancel, plus 11x equals 0. Now, do you agree that that is not in the correct order? So we need to write this out again as 4x squared plus 11x plus 4 is equal to 0, right? And now we need to apply the formula. We don't even have to try and solve this using normal factorization methods because they say we need to do it to the correct two decimal places. So the nice thing to do is to remember that this here is A, this is B, and this is C, right? And now we're going to substitute into our formula. So we go x is equal to minus 11 plus minus the square root of b squared, which is 121, minus 4 times by a, which is 4, times by c, which is 4, all over 2 times by a, which is 4. Okay? So therefore, we've got minus 11 plus or minus the square root of, and now you can take out your calculators. I know that some of you got very fancy calculators where you can do the whole fraction in one. I'm going to do it slower than that because some of us don't have those fancy calculators. And we're going to go 121 minus 4 times 4 times 4. And that becomes 57. So this is the square root of 57 all over 8, which then becomes, now there are two ways we can write this. We can either write this as minus 11 plus the square root of 57 over 8. That's one solution. Or minus 11 minus the square root of 57 over 8. And that's the other solution. So now we need to put these in our calculator. So we go minus 11 plus the square root of 57 divided by 8 and that becomes 0, 0, 8, 2 because you have to round it to two decimal places. Your calculators are going to go 0, 8, 1, 8, 7, 2, 9 but you always have to round it to two decimal places that becomes 0, 8, 2. Or we've got negative 11 minus the square root of 57, all divided by 8, and that becomes minus 2,3187, but remember they've asked us to round it to two decimal places, so that becomes minus 2,3 two because we round it up because of that eight. Right, so those are the first two questions of your exam paper. Let's move on. Now again we're still solving for x in each of the cases, okay, and the first question here 1.1.3 we can see that it is an inequality, an inequality. 
And the minute you see an inequality grade 12, what must you think? You must think number line, number line. If you are doing an inequality and you don't draw a number line, then you are going to lose marks. There are marks allocated every time for showing your number line and your critical values. Okay, so you must do this. Okay, now a common error as well that I find that my matrix do is that they multiply this out and then factorize it back and get exactly the same brackets. Okay, they've been nice. They've already factorized it for you. And what they're saying is that there are two critical values. There are two places where this expression could equal naught. So if we look at this, we can say, well, we've got 2x minus 1. If that equaled naught, the whole of this expression equal naught, then x would equal a half, right? Or, or x minus 3 equals naught, then x equals 3. So do you agree our two critical values, the values where this whole expression would equal 0 would be where x equals a half or x equals 3? Okay, so that means that I can draw a number line and I can put a half over here and I can put three over there. And at both these points on the number line, the whole of this expression is going to equal zero. Okay, so now what I want to do is I want to find values on this number line which will make the whole of this expression be positive, greater than zero. So there are two ways you can do this and I'm going to show you both ways. The first thing that you can do is you can look at this and go, well, let's choose any number smaller than a half. Okay, any number. Any number smaller than a half. So for some reason, people always go quarter or something weird. I don't understand it because zero is smaller than a half and is much easier to work with. So let's choose zero. So if I do that, I've got two times zero minus one, which becomes minus one. And I've got zero minus three, which becomes minus three. And a minus times a minus is a plus. So this is positive, okay. Now, I know that some of you go, oh, well, and it's obviously plus minus plus because that's what you've been taught and it's pretty obvious that that's always the case. It's not always the case. It will be the case in this example because this happens to multiply out to a trinomial or a quadratic, but it's not always the case. And if you're doing a final exam, it is worth just checking. So choose a number between a half and three. I would choose a number one. It doesn't matter what number you choose, as long as it's between a half and three. So if I choose a number one, I'm substituting in one, the number one for every x value. So two times one minus one. Two times one is one minus one is just one. And then I've got one minus three is minus two. And if I multiply these, I get a negative value. Okay. Again, some of you are going to go, oh, well, it's obvious that this is positive. Check grade 12. That's worth it. Okay. So let's choose a number bigger than three. Doesn't matter what. You can choose a million. I'm going to choose four. So two times four is eight. Minus one is seven. So it's positive. 4 minus 3 is positive. A positive times a positive is a positive. Right, so my final answer here is that this whole expression is positive when we are on this side of the half but not including the half, or we're on this side of the 3 but not including the 3. Okay, so if you had to draw it, that's how you would draw it on the number line. If you then have to answer it, which they're expecting you to do, you would write that x is going to be smaller than a half or x is bigger than 3. x is bigger than 3. Okay, if you'd been given this as a trinomial, you could have written it out that this is a half and this is 3, and it's obviously a positive trinomial because 2x times x is positive 2x squared. So that means it's a happy graph. So it looks like that, which means that that is plus, minus, and plus. 
Now, that is great if your inequality is a trinomial. But if it's not a trinomial, you can't really use this method. So I tend to always use the number line method where I just find my critical values, whether it be two critical values or three or four, and then solve by substituting in values. It's a little bit safer than this because this only applies if this happens to be a trinomial. Right, let us erase all our writing and do the next question. Okay. So now we are asked to solve for this. We've got 3 to the x times by 3 to the x plus 1 is equal to 27 to the x. So I'm thinking that the, what we should be doing is looking at common bases. This year we can see is actually the product rule with a common basis where what do we do? If we've got a common base of 3, we can multiply, we can add the exponents. So this becomes 3 to the x plus x plus 1. So that becomes 3 to the 2x plus 1. Okay, but now how does that help me? Because this is 27 to the x. Well, if I think about it, we need these to have the same base. If we have these being the same base, then I can get rid of the bases. Let's think about this. 3 times 3 is 9 times by 3 is 27. Right. So therefore this is 3 cubed all to the power of x. So therefore I can write this as 3 to the 2x plus 1 equals 3 to the 3x. Right. Now we've got common bases and what do we do when we have common bases? We can cancel them. Yay. So what are we left with? We're left with 2x plus 1 is equal to 3x and now we just solve for our x okay we've got therefore that 1 is equal to 3x minus 2x therefore 1 is equal to x and there is our solution how easy was that if you just thought through the fact that 27 is 3 cubed so always look for common bases yeah Right, now they've asked you to solve simultaneously. You've got 3 plus y is equal to 2x, and you've got 4x squared. This is supposed to be y squared. I'm sorry. y squared equals 2xy plus 7. So we've got 3 plus y equals 2x, and then we've got 4x squared plus y squared equals 2xy plus 7. So I think the easiest way to do this, there are a couple of ways you can solve simultaneously. You can either let, you can, if you've got things that have both got x squares and both got y squares, we can use elimination. But since the first expression here has just got x's and y's in it, and this has got x squares and y squares, I think we're going to solve either for x or y here and substitute in. So we're going to use substitution. Okay, and now we need to decide which variable we're going to substitute for. Okay, so if you look at this, if I write this out, we've got 3 plus y is equal to 2x. Do you agree that if I solve for x, I end up with a fraction? But if I solve for y, I end up with a very basic equation. So I can go y is equal to 2x minus 3. Okay, and I'm going to call that equation 1. Right, now let's look at this horrible thing here. We've got 4x squared plus y squared equals 2xy plus 7. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to call this equation 2, and I'm going to sub equation 1 into equation 2, which means that every time I see a y, instead of y, I'm going to write 2x minus 3. So let's do that. So we've got 4x squared plus bracket 2x minus 3 all squared. I'm going to take this across the equal sign. So I'm going to go minus 2x times by 2x minus 3. And when I take this across the equal sign, it becomes minus 7 and all equals 0. Right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply these brackets, right? So we've got 4x squared 
equals. When you multiply this bracket, okay, I'm going to show you how to do it slowly and then I'll show you the rule. Okay, so we've got 2x minus 3 squared. So that's the same as saying 2x minus 3, 2x minus 3. So if we use FOIL, FOIL, what is that? That is first outers, inners, last. Okay, so the first is 2x times by 2x, which becomes 4x squared. Then we've got the outers, which is that, so it becomes minus 6x. Then we've got the inners, which is minus 6x. And then we've got the last, which is minus 3 times minus 3, which is plus 9, which becomes 4x squared minus 12x plus 9. Now, there's a rule that we can use instead of FOIL. FOIL works for every type of binomials that are squared, okay, or multiplied with each other. If we have any two binomials multiplied together, you can use FOIL. But there's a rule that we can use when we are squaring a bracket, and that is you take the first term and you square it, okay, so it becomes plus. First term squared is 4x squared. You multiply the two terms together and then you double them. So 2x times 3 is 6. Remember, it's minus 6. Then we double it and we get minus 12x. Okay. And then the last term, you square. So minus 3 times minus 3 is 9. Okay. And the reason I'm putting this still in brackets is because it's a habit, because I have to be careful what the sign is in front of that bracket. In this case, it's a plus, which means it doesn't make a difference, but sometimes it does, and you need to be careful of that. If this is a minus, we'd need to multiply through. So it's always good to keep it in a bracket until you've sorted it out. Right. Now, we are going to multiply these out. Okay. And what's important is to realize that this minus belongs to 2x. So it's minus 2x times by 2x, which becomes minus 4x squared. Minus 2x times our minus 3 becomes plus 6x. Then minus 7 equals 0. Okay. So now let's make this even nicer by multiplying out this bracket, getting rid of the brackets and then adding the like terms. So what have we got? We've got 4x squared plus 4x squared minus 12x plus 9 minus 4x squared plus 6x minus 7 equals 0. So let's add up our like terms. Okay, 4 plus 4 is 8, minus 4 is back to 4, so it becomes 4x squared, minus 12x, okay, plus 6x is minus 6x, and then plus 9, minus 7 is plus 2. So now we're going to factorize this, and now you might jump immediately into the fact that it's a trinomial, but what you need to realize is that we can take out a common factor of 2. So if we take out a common factor of 2, we're left with 2x squared minus 3x plus 1. And then we can easily factorize that. So if we factorize that, we've got the factors of the first term can be 2 and 1. And the factors of the last term are 1 and 1. So obviously we've got 2x and a 1 and a x and a 1 equals 0, right? What you need to remember is that the middle term is a minus, okay? And that means that we want this number to add up to a minus 3, but because this is a positive, both the signs have to be the same, so therefore this becomes minus and minus. So our x value options are either that x equals a half or that x equals 1. Okay, and again, a common error that grade 12 make is they then stop. But you can't stop at this point because at this point you haven't solved for y. You need to substitute back into either of these two. But really, I would substitute into question one because it's much easier. Okay. 
you need to substitute back in in order to find the y value. Okay, so let's do that. I'm just going to change color so you can see what I'm doing. So I'm going to substitute x equal to a half into here. So I get y is 2 to the half minus 3. 2 times a half is 1 minus 3, which is minus 2. That means that my pair of coordinates that work for this, the x, y values that work, are a half and minus 2. Or, or, let me choose another color. I can substitute in the value 1. If I've got y is equal to 2 to the 1 minus 3, then I get 2 minus 3, which equals minus 1. So that means the other pair that work for this is 1 minus 1. Right, so it's quite a long question, this solving simultaneous question, and it's worth six marks in the exams. Well, in this exam specifically, it was worth six, but it's usually quite big. It's usually with six or seven marks. And the reason is because, one, you need to obviously show your knowledge of being able to solve simultaneously. Two, you need to be able to do a whole bunch of things. You need to be able to substitute in. You need to be able to multiply this out. You need to be able to factorize, and then you have to remember to substitute back in to get your pair okay that you're solving for so please be careful of that okay right let's do the next question so you're given f of x is equal to x cubed minus 4x squared minus 2x plus 20 and it tells you that it equals x plus 2 x squared minus 6x plus 10 okay and it says prove that f of x has only one real root okay so what does it mean if it's a real root? Remember what we spoke about? Okay, well, what you need to do is realize that you need to have a real number. And a real number is something that is going to make delta be bigger than or equal to naught. Okay, let's think about what I'm saying. I'm talking about your quadratic equation. You've got x is equal to minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. If you have a trinomial or a quadratic, this is how we, what we use to solve or to factorize, right? To find where it cuts the x-axis. If this bit here is smaller than naught, if it's negative, it means that you are getting the square root of a negative number, which means that you have a non-real number, okay? So, the rule is that when you're looking for real roots, you're looking for values of delta which are greater than or equal to zero. Now, they've said this is obviously not a trinomial. We've already factorized this for, for us into a binomial and a trinomial. If this equals naught, do you agree that x equals minus 2? And that's a real value. So we can ignore that. So what we're going to do is use this to prove whether or not the delta has got real roots. Okay, so we know that delta is equal to b squared minus 4ac. Okay. Now remember the value in front, if I write this out, x squared minus 6x plus 10, the one year is a, this whole thing here is b, and the whole of this is c. So if I write this out, you've got b squared is going to be minus 6 squared minus 4 times by a, which is 1, times by c, which is 10. So minus 6 squared is 36, minus 4 times 10 is minus 40, so that is minus 4, which means your delta is smaller than 0, which means that this thing here, this quadratic has got non-real roots. If that's the case, if that's got non-real roots, then this whole thing only has got one real root, and it's that, that x equals minus 2. That's the only real root it's got. Okay, everybody happy with that? You'll understand. Right, let's move on. 
Right, now we have gone on to the next question and we're starting to look at sequences and series. Okay, it says that we are given 0 minus 1, 1, 6, 14. And the first question says, show that the sequence has a constant second difference. So whenever you're talking about second difference, we're talking about quadratic sequences or series, okay? So let's have a look at it. Let's write it out. We've got 0, minus 1, 1, 6, and 14. So the first difference is basically when we subtract these two. We go minus 1, minus 0 is minus 1. 1 minus minus 1 is minus 2, is just 2. I'm actually going to write this bigger just in a second. Let's write this bigger. We've got 0, minus 1, 1, 6, and 14. Right. Minus 1, minus 0 is minus 1. Right. 1 minus minus 1 is going to be 2. 6 minus 1 is 5. 14 minus 6 is 8. So that's our first difference. But we have to show that it's got a constant second difference. So now what we do is we do exactly the same thing with this. So we go again and we go 2 minus minus 1. Minus times the minus is a plus, so that becomes 3. 5 minus 2 is 3, and 8 minus 5 is 3. So there is your common second difference, and the value is 3. Okay. Now it says write down the next term of the sequence. Okay, well, let's think about this. Yeah, we've gone up. Okay, it's very easy, because what we can do, and let me just change color so you can see what I'm doing. We know that the next difference here is going to be 3. So 8 plus 3 is going to be 11. So then what do I have to do? I have to add 11 to my 14. So I end up with the next difference has to be 20, has to be 25. Okay, so my next number up is 25 because I'm adding 11 to that 14. Right. Now it says determine an expression for the nth term of the sequence. The nth term of the sequence. Okay, now the way this works is the first difference is allocated the value of A plus B plus C. And the second difference, sorry, let's try again. The first term is allocated A plus B plus C. The first difference between these two is allocated 3a plus b, and this is allocated 2a. Right, so we're going to use this rule, and we're going to use that to solve the general formula for the term. The term general formula is tn is equal to a n squared plus bn plus C. So we are going to use this now to solve for A, B, and C. And grade 12s, these aren't on your formula sheet, okay? So you guys actually need to learn this. You need to learn that the very first term of a quadratic sequence can be given the values A plus B plus C or can be represented by A plus B plus C. The first difference can be represented by 3A plus B and the third dif second difference by 2A. And then we solve. Okay, so 2a equals 3, therefore a is going to be 3 over 2, right? Happy with that. So we know that this is going to be 3 over 2n squared plus, now we're solving for b. So we know that, and I'm just going to, yeah, okay, so we got 3a plus b is equal to minus 1, but a is 3 over 2, so you've got 3 times 3 over 2 plus b is equal to negative 1. So if I multiply that out, I've got 9 over 2 plus b is equal to negative 1. So therefore my b is going to be minus 1 
minus 9 over 2, so therefore b becomes minus 11 over 2. So b is minus 11 over 2n. Right, and now I need to solve for c. Okay, so I've got, I'm going to write it over here. I'm sorry my writing so scribbly. I will work on that. Okay, we've got a plus b plus c is equal to 0. We know that a is 3 over 2 plus b is minus 11 over 2 plus c has to equal 0. Okay, so then if we solve this, we've got 3 over 2 minus 11 over 2 is equal to minus c. So therefore we can say that we've got negative c is equal to negative 8 over 2, therefore c is equal to 4. So therefore we got plus 4. So if we want to write it out nicely, we've got 3 over 2 n squared minus 11 over 2 n plus 4. And that is the general formula for this. Okay, now let's move on to the next question. Now it says calculate the 30th term. So all that we are doing is we are substituting 30 into the n. And I'm going to erase all this writing and then start again because we actually don't like this at all. So we had that tn is equal to 3 over 2 n squared plus sorry, minus 11 over 2n plus 4. And they want the 30th term. And all we are doing then is substituting in 4n, the value 30. So we go t30 is equal to 3 over 2 times 30 squared minus 11 over 2 times by 30 plus 4. Okay, so if we do that and we pop it in our calculators, we come up with a value of 1,189. And that is the 30th term, the 30th term. All right, let's move on to the next question. It says, in the arithmetic series, A plus 13 plus B plus 27 plus continue, continue, continue. It says, prove that A equals 6 and B equals 20. So what do we know about the arithmetic series? We know that in the arithmetic series, the T2 minus T1 is equal to T3 minus T2, which equals your common difference, okay? That there is a common difference. That is the whole point about the arithmetic series is that we're adding the same amount every time. So what does that mean? That means that 27 minus b has to equal b minus 13, right? Which means that we can solve for this. We've then got 27 plus 13 is equal to b plus b. This becomes 40 is equal to 2b. And therefore, we've got that 20 is equal to b. Yay, so we've solved that. Okay, so then we know that this is 20. And then it's very easy because now we can see, well, it's obvious that my common difference is 7, right? 20 plus what gives me 7? Plus 7, 27. What from 20 minus what gives me 13? Well, then again, it's obviously 7. So 13 minus 7 is 6. So obviously A is 6. Okay. Now, last question for today. It says determine which term of the series will be equal to 230. So in order to do that, we actually need to find this general formula for the term. So the general formula for the term of a arithmetic series is what? So I just want to erase. There we go. It's Tn is equal to A plus N minus 1D. 
So what do these stand for? A stands for your first term. N is the number of terms. Okay, and D stands for your common difference. And we know all these numbers except for N, but we can solve that because we know what the TN is. It happens to be 230. So let's do this. We've got that 230 is equal to A, the first term, which is 6, plus N minus 1, times by d, which in this case the common difference, which is we've worked out already, is 7. So therefore we can now just solve for our n. So we go 230 minus 6 is 224. That is equal to n minus 1 times by 7. Okay, so then what we can do is multiply out these brackets. So we get 224 is equal to 7n minus 7. So we take that across and we add it. So we get 231 is equal to 7n. So we divide both sides by 7 and we end up with n is equal to 33. So that means that the 33rd term is equal to 230. The 33rd term is equal to 230. So normally I would carry on with the rest of this lesson, but we've only got um, a couple of minutes. Actually, no, we can do this. Let's do this. Question 2.3, it says, for which value or values of k will the series converge? Okay, so we've got 1 minus k over 5 plus 1 minus k over 5 squared plus 1 minus k over 5 cubed, etc. And what you need to realize is as soon as you see the word converge, that we are talking geometric series. We're talking geometric series, which means we're looking at not a common difference, but a common ratio, a common ratio. And in this case, the common ratio happens to be the whole of this bracket. And it's pretty easy to see because yeah, you've got one minus K over five, yeah, you've got 1 minus k over 5 all squared. Yeah, you've got 1 minus k over 5 cubed, etc., etc. So therefore, my common ratio, the thing that I'm multiplying by every time, R happens to be 1 minus k over 5. Now, for this to converge, for the whole series to converge, your common ratio, the rule is R has to be smaller than 1 and bigger than minus 1. In other words, it has to be a fraction. So what we need to do is solve this for the values of K so that this is true. So let's do that. You've got 1 minus K over 5 is smaller than 1 and bigger than minus 1. So what we do is basically if you want to, you can cover this side here and you can multiply through by 5 and then you can cover this and multiply by 5. But basically you're multiplying what you're doing to one side, you're doing to the other side as well. So yeah, we've got minus 1 times 5 is smaller than 1 minus k is smaller than 1 times 5. So we've got minus 5 is smaller than 1 minus k is smaller than 5. Now remember we're solving for k, so we need to get rid of this, my, this 1, so we're going to subtract 1 from both of these sides. So we've got minus 5 minus 1 is smaller than minus k is smaller than 5 minus 1. So we've got minus 6 is smaller than minus k is smaller than 4. Okay, and here's the trick. We want a positive k. So we need to divide by a negative number, a negative, a minus. But whenever you divide by a minus, what happens to your inequality signs? They swap over. So you need to then remember that if you want a positive k here, yeah, you need to divide by minus, but you're dividing the whole expression by minus, which means these change. So therefore we've got six is greater than k is greater than four. And that is your answer. It says for which values of k will the series converge? Well, it'll be that k has got to be greater than four and smaller than six. So any number between four and six will work. Right, grade 12, that's it for today.
please join me again tomorrow and we'll carry on going through this exam paper. Again, like I said, if you've missed anything or you want to go through it again, just go click on the session afterwards and this video will be up as a, obviously a board, not a live broadcast anymore, it'll be recording. Okay, but join the class so you can message me. Have a great day.